we're very pleased to host you and Mark Davis this afternoon for mobilizing the moment. Given the chaotic and challenging times we live in, we could not have better planned an exhibition for Mark than now. We have worked together with Mark for a quarter of a century, which sounds like a very long time, even to me. That's nearly half the life of the gallery. We have never dreamed that the evolution of Mark's art and the amazing response to it would be what it is. Mark has completed nearly 900 pieces for the gallery over the past 25 years, and more than 90% of those works have been spoken for. After our 53 years in the gallery, I can affirm that this response is an astonishing record, and it is a true tribute to the integrity of the artist and the spirit that has created these works. Best of all, each work has provided its owner with great joy. Mark brings a tremendous energy to the creation of each piece, small or large. Each sculpture provides him with an opportunity to visually sing a new song of forms and colors that awaken a true sense of delight for each of us. Mark provides us with an opportunity to inhabit a visual and emotional place of fluid movement and for sure visual delight. What a gift. When he published his monograph, Ode to Joy, the title seemed to be exactly correct, both visually and musically, as it referred to the final movement of the fourth or the fourth movement of the Beethoven's Ninth Symphony entitled Ode to Joy. Mark's work indeed is infused by visual and oral combination of joy and celebration. Therefore, it's a true joy to share this time with you and with Mark. As a matter of housekeeping, so you'll have a sense of what this might turn out to be, Mark and I will exchange our versions of his biography and his relationship with the gallery and our working together. We'll then unveil two new works that will serve as a springboard for audience participation. And we'll ask you to provide your title to each of those works as shown by Rose. At the close of our time together, Mark will select the most creative title, and those of you that know his titles know they're creative, so you're in a good competition. The author will win the mobile. To enter, please share your suggestions through the chat function, which Rose will explain. Now. <laughs> so if everyone looks at the bottom of their screen, um, there is a thing that says chat and I will type in when the time comes and the moment is right. Um, I'll say um, untitled piece A or untitled piece B and under each category, um, you will then submit your name one, one submission per, per work. Um, so when the time comes, we'll go more into that, but just maybe locate that right now um, in Zoom. Thereafter, Mark, as the master of commission, for sure, this is a very delicate balance and the perfect description for a mobile maker. Mark will share with us how he's able to maintain his artistic integrity while listening carefully and caringly to the folks who have trust him to create a special work for their home or public space. Mark will share tales of four of nearly 50 such adventures. In all our years, we have rarely seen that an artist commission's relationship works 100% of the time, but it has always worked with Mark. And it's because of who Mark is and how he is able to focus on each individual and listen to them carefully and then effectively satisfy himself and them with the work he creates for them. It's been an absolute joy and delight as the middle person in this relationship to watch that evolve and grow. And I must say that in all of our experience, that success rate, but also the sense of satisfaction on both sides has been a joy to watch. 
Finally, we'll revisit the untitled works, share your suggestions, and announce the winning title. So let's begin with mobilizing the moment as it is intended to awaken in all of us a time of pure joy and delight. Welcome to a joy-filled universe of Mark Davis. Mark, it's your turn to at least share from your perspective um, and uh, memory how this all began. Well, um, uh, I'm not sure where to start, Bernie. Um, certainly for uh, my connection with you, when I was a, co was a kid, I started making Mobile's uh, Coffee and Calder. And uh, that was actually incredibly easy for me. And as I got into my 30s, I um, kept making mobiles, but they were very similar to that. They were dots on the end of wires, very, very Calder-like. Um, but I was playing with different materials, and I was also doing jewelry like Calder did. Um, now, the jewelry turned into a business for me, and I was in New York City, uh, pounding the pavement uh, into all the major stores, um, Saks Fifth Avenue, Bloomingdale's, and I was then met somebody at Tiffany's and started showing in the Tiffany windows. At that point, I was doing the mobiles, and I was starting to really get excited about my own identity of doing that. Um, after uh, a few years of just working and working and working, doing things uh, for whoever I could, I got much, my craft improved a great deal. And I realized that I had sort of an identity, even though I wasn't feeling that it was a confident, definite direction, it was definitely the idea of sculpture, uh, sculptors I enjoyed, painters I enjoyed. And um, I finally decided through a friend, my friend was Jim Shantz, who was with the Pucker Gallery. Uh, he brought me to gallery, to the gallery, and I met you, Bernie, and you seemed to think there was something there. So you took me on for a small group show. We actually sold a few pieces, which I think surprised both of us. And a couple of years later, you gave me my own show, and uh, it sold out. The whole show sold out. And that allowed me to buy the first house I ever had, take all the upstairs walls out, make a studio for myself, and get into it. And that's been the greatest joy of my life because as I've said to almost anybody, I believe that my particular kind of artwork is, develops by just doing it and doing it and doing it. And the fact that it was selling was like, a huge bonus for me. Um, I couldn't believe it, and that was allowing me to keep going. So this is sort of the basic story. Mark, when you refer to that, you refer to, from, from my perspective, the most um, satisfying aspect of the gallery, which is the gallery's ability to <laughs> It also enables us to come to a whole new level of, thank goodness, um, it, it allows us to be able to trust the judgment that we made up front. Sales are important, not necessarily financially in the beginning, but they are a reinforcement both for the gallery, but I think primarily for the uh, inner well-being of the individual artist. Yes. Affirmation. And the money you indicated does enable one to have a house and a studio and to work more freely, but it's also a connection to other people. And for me, the glory of your continued evolution and growth has come out of your um, inner integrity to believe in other people's affirmation of what you do. Yes. And, you, and it really allows you a kind of freedom that mm. um, 
none of us think about in the beginning because there's the level of survival. But then when you get to an advanced age, certainly mine, if not yours, um, you can reflect back and say, wow, that did make a difference. That so-and-so had enough faith in me to commit to my work or to say to me, go ahead. I'd love for you to create a piece that's part of my world. And so the commissions, I think, in many, many ways have extended that relationship to a much broader community than just you in the gallery. But it worked because you stepped up. It's, it's interesting. I, um, uh, most of my life, I consider myself incredibly shy and uh, self-depreciating. And um, this was one aspect of my life. I remember the first time I, you had me go out on a commission, meaning I went to the house, I met the people. I was terrified out of my mind. And you know what? The, as I was talking with them, I realized a few things. One was that um, just because they had already been to the gallery, they had seen the work, they had talked to you, they got me. They understood, they were excited, and, and this was something I, this, this was a revelation to me. So I got to get rid of all that anxiety and just focus on them, think about who they were, what they liked, how, what they liked that I did, what directions they liked the most, what spoke to them the most, and just really let myself go. So what you're saying about the freedom is absolutely true. And it's something that I would not have explained, I would have not uh, been able to explain, but now that I feel it, it's, it's just grown and grown and grown. I have such a tremendous confidence now, and, and I'm excited by every single person I get to meet. These are people I do not meet in my normal life, in my average everyday life. Um, they're fascinating people, Bernie. I don't know how you do that, but everybody that seems to come into the gallery and look at my work and like it that i've met they're they're wonderful and so there's a wonder that that connection is is quite you know mutual so the key word you used and i think it's critical um in any uh, human relationship but certainly involved in people's trust of you and your trust of them comes out of the um, generosity of creating works that bring people great joy mm. Uh, our end, as you know, the gallery is filled with very diverse statements, some of which challenge people around issues of moral behavior, others of which may serve to uplift their lives spiritually, as Brother Thomas's work might do. Yeah. But in the case of your work, it is um, a wonderful opportunity to be the middle person, the bridge between the two of you, because the gallery's relationship with the vast majority of people we've worked with over the years is based upon trust. And I really believe all galleries that do endure, endure because of that one single element of trust. Yeah. Once that's in place, then that's transferable, assuming that in your case, you're open to that and then you trust that relationship and your work continues to evolve and grow, get better and more wonderful. And so, <laughs> talked enough about been enough nice about both of us we should walk walk on to some of the works that um we've prepared because i think it's a wonderful journey through not only the work that you're presently doing which is I think, a culmination of or certainly an advancement over everything you've done but at the same time still goes back to the very basic sense of joy when i first saw your work which is it made me smile and it made me <laughs> not only uh, on a surface basis but an inner sense of joy and that is what art can do in many ways at its very best so Rose can we begin with some of the PowerPoint presentations and Mark will kind of walk us through them um, this is called uh, center of the nebula um, it, it was just, uh, it was actually a rather, it's a smaller piece. I think, what is it? 15 feet um, up and down, 19 feet across, uh, inches across. Um, and uh, the idea is looking up into the skies, looking up into the universe and sort of a daydream. I mean, the whole thing is sort of reminds me of a daydream of the sky, of, of the 
planets, of the stars, uh, constellations. Um, the next thing on our PowerPoint is the is the uh, is a moving piece so that you can see that all the little uh, black spheres um, move around on a string. So they're a little separate mobile unto themselves, almost uh, as though there's a fishing pole with a mobile coming down from it. Um, can you move on to the second one? I think you did a lovely video of that. <laughs> so, so it's got great movement. It's got great movement and generally you don't have a fan on it. So somebody has really given this a big shove. <laughs> that would be Rose. Should I go on, Bernie? You should have been, I just, there clearly is the Van Gogh painting um, of Starry Night. There's also yeah. the Dave Brubeck piece with the quartet playing uh, Starry, Starry Night. But this was the beginning of um, an unintentional series, I think is the way to describe it. Uh, and I ask that we share, um, I think there are six variations. So this is, yeah. instead of Mark Davis, it's Johann Sebastian Davis and the six variations on a theme of Starry Night. I think the first one was uh, five years ago, 2015. And every year or two, I make a new one. And they sort of follow something of a progression. Um, the first one I did was actually a, 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 just a thank you card I did for a friend uh, with, with cut out paper. And when I did the black background with the blue piece and then these, these, these very spontaneously cut out um, uh, stars with little trails, um, I, I said, oh, this is, this is love, like uh, the Matisse uh, cutouts that I love so much. Um, and it just had that sort of sense of joy. And I, I thought, I, I really, really liked it. I took a photo of it before I gave it to my friend. And then I set about making my first piece. And uh, it's, just, it's just fun to always go back to it. And now the one from this year, the last one, the lar is quite large. It's you know, three feet high. And uh, it's, it's just a more fully formed, I think. But uh, each one has its own character. In addition to that, Mark, however, this is one of, from my point of view, an invention of yours. Collars were extended to float in space and move or hang from something. And these are wall mounts. So mm. the idea of creating a color, shape, form, and movement where one might normally hang a painting, but benefit not only from the movement and the color, but also the shadows. Yes. Uh, creates both um, a very beautiful work of art, but it does something as well. It creates space and air. So from the point of view of a gallerist, if I were to sell a painting the size of the rectangle, which <laughs> one of the images is on, it would fill that space and remain static. Whereas what you've done is created visual energy in that same space and invited people to continue to look at and enjoy and really be um, entertained, if you will, visually by the movement in each one of these. So I think this is a splendid way for people to understand what you have added to the tradition of mobile making. Yes. I, uh, I, I've been very, very happy with the way the wall mounted, wall, mount, wall mounted pieces have been. It, 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 it arose from um, feeling as though I had done hanging mobiles and standing mobiles um, for quite a few years. And just, I, I needed to, to expand. I needed to do something fresh and something new and I didn't know what to do. Um, and I love, love uh, uh, certain painters. I mean, I, my, my interests are sort of all over the place. So. Uh, I was studying when I when actually bring it there's a little quick story uh, when I first got my airbrush um, I did the first piece it wasn't a large piece but uh, I did not know color I felt that I had no understanding of color and these um, and you I, I brought it into you and said I'm sort of frustrated realizing I don't understand color as much as I thought I did and you looked at the piece and you said, well, don't learn. And I thought that was about the best compliment I've ever had. 
and it, it was true. What I did was um, simply studied Van Gogh and uh, realizing how much color was in something that was red, it, you, the eye would read it as one color and in fact it was filled with millions of different colors. Many painters have been doing that all, you know, throughout history, but he brought it out more. He, he, you saw the brush strokes, you really felt it. And so that for me was a, a, big, uh, a big learning. Um, and so all of these wall pieces arose from my love of painting. Um, and this, this piece we're looking at now uh, is one of my favorites. Every, every year there's a new favorite. Um, and it's, it's, it's interesting the way I construct things. There's definitely a feeling of poetry. My, my father was an academic and a, a, a writer um, and a poet. And um, I, I think I've taken in a certain amount of that. The piece with the, the wire is uh, it was something I had made a long time ago. It was in a corner. I, I knew I liked it. I didn't know what to do with it. And finally, I brought it out and just everything else sort of fit in around it. Uh, it was very important to me to have that be the, the, the one sort of uh, uh, poetic element and, and then, and then the, the strong shape behind it. And then when I, when I knew it needed some, <laughs> I hate to say the word sparkle, but it needed something that gave it the, something of strong character, but delicate line. And that's where the gold came from. And it's, it's beautiful. And it, it moves beautifully, too. It, so a lot of the pieces are hung from strings so that the littlest breeze makes them just bob back and forth. So, Mark, one of the things about this and in general about the work is that the use of gold leaf is very dangerous uh, for most artists mm -hmm. outside of, like, 13th century Italian artists and altar pieces. And, but... Mm -hmm. Every artist will stay away from it, and part of it is that your craft as a jeweler created a comfort level for you to understand how to control it and integrate it into your vision. So yes. we're going to see a number of pieces along the way, some that um, predominate with the um, gold as part of them against the black. They're enormously dramatic that I think virtually no one else could make or create <laughs> because the, the, your toolbox things in it that others don't and so your acquaintance with the, the jewelry aspect of it has allowed you a greater freedom in the creation of your mobiles and the next one I think is a really nice example of that yes now I, I want to give uh, you a lot of credit for this Bernie you gave me a book on Saul Steinberg I had always loved his work. I, I, he's an amazing, amazing uh, political commentary, humanitarian commentary. Um, but what I loved about looking through the whole book and just immersing myself in it for about a week was um, he, he creates line and texture and connects them uh, I don't know, like, like again, the, my word is poetry. Um, and so I, that inspired me to do just kind of things that, that, that felt more like, like line and form in, in a sort of a clean, simple way. But then, of course, I had to make lots and lots of pieces that all move together. But that, that was, that's been a, a lot of fun uh, playing with this whole new direction. Well, I, I appreciate what you're saying. As you probably know, over the past five years, the gallery has committed itself pretty strongly to trying to acquire specific Steinbergs, not all the work that he did, but almost all of it um, is based upon the quality of his line. <clears throat> and I think he said one time that he's actually a writer who draws. So <laughs> yeah. the aspect of his capacity to create a visual conversation um, I, in all honesty, I think I gave you the book with some intention. Um, <laughs> and I'm thrilled to see this piece and a number of others that sort of have the characteristics without being copied. And I think yeah. that one of the strengths of your work in general is the capacity to really uh, integrate 
to yourself what you are inspired by and what, what brings you pleasure. And then find your own way to let it out again and to share it. And this piece is just a splendid example of it. The next one is, is a really quite marvelous piece. Um, and um, it's, I don't know, Rosa, I don't want to mess things up. If you can go back and forth between yourself with the piece behind you oh, and yeah. get a sense of the scale of it in the gallery. Um, Mark created this piece specifically for um, the new gallery. Um, it is the wall that you see as you walk in. Um, my guess is that it must have uh, hundreds of technical issues, out of which as the gallerist I need to worry about. But Mark has resolved in quite splendid ways. Seeing it on the screen, I wanna just emphasize this for everyone who's watching, is a wonderful way to experience a work of art. It's as if you are looking at it through a camera and we've already cleared up everything on the field around you, and then you can simply enjoy it. So Rose, I don't know if you can go back to you um, um, and share that on the Let screen. Let me try. Let me try. That's there. It. There. Yeah. Size yeah. comparison. <laughs> and I remember when Mark brought this in, um, he, he did the first layer in the back, and I said, oh my gosh, it's beautiful. And he went, oh, it's not anywhere close to being done. Like, you haven't seen anything yet. And I was like, well, you've given me a beautiful backdrop. It's wonderful, but and huge. So that's a very helpful way, hopefully, for people to understand that there is the way you can see it separate from its uh, space or place where it's made for. But um, in all fairness, it could be put in any space that's large enough. Mark, would you like to talk a little about the creation of the piece itself? Um, yeah, I, 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 I think that, uh, first of all, when, I, when, I, when you get off the elevator at the gallery, um, you see a huge wall behind the behind a row of desks or the you know the, the one big desk in front um and i you had just moved into the space and i was getting very excited about all kinds of things my work the new space i have my own room within the gallery um and and i had the time to spend two months making this piece. Um, and I just wanted to push myself very, very far, and I did. And it's amazing to think that it has that many hours of work in it, and yet it still has a clean simplicity to it. Um, so the idea was, first of all, to make something rather large, which gave me the ability to, to spread out. I think it's very, it was very exciting for me to really spread out, make it nine feet wide. And the idea of layering was very, I was very, very excited about that. That's something that, you know, we, we, we have paintings that we, you know, paintings on the wall and, and, and we have sculptures, uh, you know, standing sculptures, bronzes. Um, we have Brother Thomas's uh, big forms. There's something here with the layering that can't be done any other way. And they're all hung from strings. Everything is hung from strings so that it all kinds of bobs and weaves as it, uh, it, in the breeze. But there's the, the gray shapes in the back are one layer. Then the white pieces are another layer, a few inches away, like six inches away from that. Um, the the, the uh, amber colors are, are kind of behind those white shapes. And then in front of all of it is, that is one continuous mobile, the black lines. And um, I don't know what to say, it was just, it was a real labor of love. i highly happy that that came out the way it did. You mentioned at the beginning, and I, I should have mentioned earlier on, that there was this wonderful move forward for you when the gallery moved one block away, because <laughs> the ceilings in the old space were actually very low compared to the new space. And yeah. for certain artists, it's not a good thing. The Gunnar Norman uh, and my point yeah. is to <laughs> feel a little lost in a large space like it. But for your work, it really provided you with a new opportunity 
And this piece certainly, I think, and you've called it tempered, exu tempered exuberance. I would call it just plain old exuberance. But <laughs> I think it works quite wonderfully. And it's a wonderful welcome visually to anyone who comes into the space. So the final two pieces we're gonna talk about together before we move on to the commissions. Rose, if you can put those up, it'd be great. These are the, uh, the untitled pieces that we're going to uh, get titles for. Okay, Rose, do you wanna talk a little about them or we're good? Yes, so I'm just sending a message now into the chat box so that people can find it. So make sure that in your chat box, it's addressed to attendees and panelists, or at the very least panelists so that will be able to see it. Um, and we're gonna start off with um, the untitled piece um, A. So just start sending them in, take a moment to really get a sense of, of what it looks like, um, how you feel when you look at it, um, and get some inspiration for, uh, for sending that into the chat box. So I will now share my screen again. So there you have one and two. Uh, a is on, as you're looking at your screen, on the left um, and the other on the right. And I think we can take a couple of seconds. Uh, years ago, I was involved with a situation where I suggested to the clergy that it would be very nice if we took a minute, which is 60 seconds of silence uh, for people to reflect. Um, and about 25 seconds later, he gave up. But I think if we take, <laughs> people are not used to silence, but I think if we give another few seconds of just enjoying both A and B, then very much, um, I, since I spoke a bit at the beginning about Mark's commissions, I asked him if he would be willing to talk about four of those commissions to give a sense of what I had tried to imply, which is his capacity to both um, engage, hear, and same time create a work of art that satisfies his standards. So I think we can probably move on to um, the commissions. All right, and then if you want to um, continue thinking about this, um, maybe making a mental note of A and B and sending them in as you will, but I'm noticing people are sending in wonderful names already. Um, yeah. But if you haven't done B yet, you can start putting in B and if we, change from this PowerPoint slide, then just label it A or B so that we know which one you are, are, are making. Well, I'm seeing a lot of people responding, Rose, so maybe we'll come back to it uh, for a little refresher, sort of, you know, the last guess on the exam before we finally, before Mike finally chooses. <laughs> I mean, I, this is, you know, this is more like uh, horse, bay, horse betting, I think, that they keep... <laughs> Oh, I'm going to have a tough time deciding. So let's move on then, please. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. This, this was a mission um, for a couple in New Hampshire that lived on a lake. And, um, you know, I've done many, many commissions that I'm very, very happy with. This, the, the main reason I wanted to point this one out was that um, they, they live on a lake, so they're surrounded by nature. They wanted... Um, they. Uh, you know, it's it's wonderful meeting these people because they 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 were so excited to show me around their house, to show me the lake, to show me the woods, and 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 you know their how they live, and and that was really cool. So they they liked blues and greens a lot, and um and uh, I I they wanted to keep it kind of light in in, in tone and color and form, and lots of space between things. Well, I anyway, that was my take on what I thought they wanted. And it was. So the white pieces are actually sort of bird-like forms. Um, the other shapes are just uh, just shapes that I felt, you know, sort of indicated water and, um, and then a, 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 a sun or a moon at the top. But the interesting thing here is that um, that pinkish or mauve piece uh, in the upper upper section, she took me over to the rug in the room next door and uh, next in, in the dining room next to it, next to where the piece was gonna be hung. And 
said, I, we, we really love all the blues, uh, the blues and greens in this rug, but we also love this, this pink color, this sort of moth pink color. And is there any way you could put, incorporate that into the piece? And I thought, boy, you know, at that point, it was not in my vocabulary to add pink into what I thought of harmonious blues and greens. So I said, well, I'll try. I'll try, and if it doesn't work, then I'll tell you that, but I will try it. And the big thing I learned from that was that I was able to do it because when I'm working with airbrush, I'll start a piece like that, that, that moth piece, and it's, it's a little hard to see the color. Uh, there's, a, there's a shadow there, but um, it's, it's, I start out painting the whole piece uh, a light pink, and then I just slowly, grade in colors from the sides so that the middle of it stays that stays almost completely that that initial pink but the colors on the sides if I added just the littlest bit of blue to that palette it's so fine a spray that it, the, the eye doesn't pick it up as blue it just made it blend with the with the blue and green pieces and I thought it was just beautiful. I thought it was a, a, a wonderful statement, a wonderful design and poetry statement. And um, anyway, that's, that's the reason I wanted to bring that one up is because there's a lot that I learn when I'm talking to people, trying to, you know, they have an idea, I know what I can do, and there's a symmetry that does happen. And there are many times that I've tried things that I thought I would never be able to do. And I figured out a way to make it work. And, you know, I never went to school. I, I took a three week craft course and uh, learned how to do metal forming, uh, sheet forming. And that was it. And honestly, for years, I thought that was a detriment. Now I realize that I was very lucky because I keep my mind very open because of that, I think. Well, I think part of it is that, Mark, but I would argue on an ongoing basis that um, who people are really is who they are. And so mm -hmm. even on to school, your need to remain curious, to re remain open, and also I think remain <laughs> available. Yes, yeah. People really want, because at the end of the day, um, there, a friend used to say, we're either buyers or sellers. The vast majority of us are, in fact, sellers, and we're presenting ourselves through what we do to others. And in this case, you are an extraordinary listener and in that process, open to what people are saying to you with the hope that they will, in fact, love it. Just as ultimately what you just said, which is lovely, is that you learn from listening and then did something you didn't think you could do. Uh, the next one is a totally different which I, uh, you can certainly see on the screen by scale, if nothing else. Um, it's a public space um, in Chicago, and Mark can certainly provide you with much more detail. Um, it's a big, uh, uh, big building in downtown Chicago called the Wrigley Building, um, which, um, you know, I'm not actually positive of my, my facts, but um, it is one of the very early Art Deco sort of monuments. The, uh, the basic structure of it is, is pure deco. Um, all the interior details are rich and strong. Um, it's, just, it's, it's just, it's known for that um, and, and iconic. So I've always had a love of art deco and um, sort of that organized line. Um, I don't know how else to say it. Anyway, this, got me the, the space would that I had that much space to work with, I forget 16 feet. And um I wanted it to be my work with my the the things I love in it, but I wanted to kind of contain it within uh boxes almost, you know, uh, you know um Instead of all rounded shapes, I wanted to give it uh, right angles, rounded right angles, but still. And um, so it was, uh, 
I first made a, a, a model, a beautiful model, which is the next picture, Rose, if you can show it. Um, yeah, that, that was um, uh, about two feet tall, uh, just pieces of, 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 of heavy paper and um, paint. And there, each one of those has uh, got a little wire behind it that, that brings it out so that I could kind of see what the shadows were gonna be like. How, and how it would um, ultimately. I, so that was my working model. And then in the piece itself came out a little bit differently, but uh, yeah, let's go back. Um, but uh, I, I, I was very happy with the way that came out. So this has this element of all of the things that you love in terms of shapes, stars, and almost animal-like forms, Matisse-like forms, seed-like forms. And at the same time, you've created a grid, the dark area against which it all pops out. Right. Um, and it's really um, interesting, again, because this is something you've never done, worked at this scale. And it's, in a sense, like a bas relief. Um, yeah. And yeah. you didn't want people to get impaled on it if it was too far out. On the other hand, it creates a constant sense of conversation, joy in the space for people who come into it. So again, you were given this opportunity and then took, from my perspective, uh, full advantage of it to create mm. something well beyond what you would normally expect anybody to be doing, um, but you did it, did it so well. So now we'll go to the one after that one more. There you go. That's a little familiar because that's actually in our house. But, and so this is a satisfied client talking uh, beside Mark's gallerist, but I just wanted to say that what a joy to confront the idea of taking this very contemporary language, putting it in the context of uh, 1902 um, fruit and vegetables, basically. All the carving around it places it when the space was originally developed. And then Mark can speak more about how he thought about the challenge of working with that as a foil. First of all, can you imagine being asked by the, the, the owner of the gallery that shows your work to do something for his private home? It was a little intimidating. Um, but, you know, it was so exciting, the idea of working with, within that structure and trying to do something that would be respectful of the structure and somehow work with it, but also break out of it. So uh, if you'll see that there's, there's, there's sort of, um, it's, it's, a, it's a bit of a frame, uh, you know, framed pieces, uh, very sort of, uh, you know, the, the green pieces on the bottom, they're actually like an olive green, um, sort of giving strong strength, um, a kind of a feeling of order and structure but then, then exploding a little to the right and definitely exploding up to the upper left, coming out of the frame, going out of not just my frame, but the frame of the uh, panel behind it. Um, and the colors, the, there's some gold leaf there on the, uh, on the, on the middle left. And uh, I, I, it, was a, it was a challenge, Bernie, but I was very, very happy. Way it came out. Probably 10 years later, and it still remains alive and fresh in the space. So yeah. it is fun for me just to have it on the screen again and to reflect on the process. And I think simply you visit if, as best you can spaces. Um, um, my favorite story, however, was a commission that came from people who had admired your work greatly and who had decided that they had a wonderful place in Florida. Um, and they sent you all the measurements, very carefully done, very thoughtfully done, all of the elements of color in the room, and then you created design for them, I think in styrofoam and wires and string, and they approved it, um, and you made it, and then we, you very carefully wrapped it, we did, and shipped it to Florida. And the commissioner in that case of it was handy, and decided that he would install it. And he did, he did a beautiful job and sent you and us a photograph of it. And we all looked at it and said, that looks fantastic. And you said, it's been hung upside down. 
<laughs> so they were able to, to reconfigure it, but the notion is that you were yeah. able to create the body. It's, it, it's, but, it sort uh, of still works. <laughs> yeah, yeah so we got credit for that. Yeah, yeah, balance, I guess. So that's what we could call this as well. Now, we're going on to the last of the commissions, which is, um, I would say, un our understatement would say it's not your normal commission. Yeah, yeah. This was uh, a, a huge opportunity. Um, it's in Chicago, and it's, uh, uh, well, first, I, I flew off to Chicago to meet uh, the board which which included the the uh, the engineers the the CEO the marketing people um, and they took me first before we talked about any uh, any actual uh, thing I would do they just took me through the hospital and this is called the the Lori meaning this is the woman's name is Lori uh, Children's Hospital um, it's for very did you I'm, that's fine. Um, yeah. um, it, it, it was, it was, it's an incredible hospital. I, um, with, with all kinds of different artists that have done different things, uh, playful, uh, interactive, wonderful things that basically, I mean, when you, you come into the building, there's, there's, uh, uh whales, uh, I, I believe they're, they're fiberglass whales floating up the, 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 the staircase. It's, it's just an amazing place. And it, it's filled with wonder and art and color and the idea being that these kids come into the hospital, they're very sick, um, their families are very worried, um, and they're trying to make it a very joyful place. And clearly, it clearly really does that. Um, then after all of that uh, introduction, they said what we actually need at this point is something outside the building as as you go into the main lobby um there's a big uh entryway and it's got these huge columns that hold up the rest of the building and uh and their initial plan was to to get an artist to do a a, a sculpture in the middle of those columns and this was they, they had somebody that had done the stacked stacked glass pieces in the middle and it was just sort of another column. It didn't really have much, uh, it didn't really quite work. And they were, they were trying to figure out what would maybe work the best. So seeing as I work with mobiles and I could not make something that moved because we're outside in Chicago, uh, the Windy City. And so, but I thought I could still give the feeling, the, 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 the appearance, the feeling, the energy, the excitement of movement above people's heads because there was enough room. There was a very high, it was a very high ceiling. In the, in the big picture in the middle, you can kind of see the dark shapes are actually the height of people. Um, so it was quite high. Um, and I said to the CEO at the time, I said, can you, can you imagine rather than a sculpture placed somewhere here that the entire surface of the ceiling is filled with waves, um, just waves. And the whole team just thought that was a wonderful idea. And it just kind of came to me as sort of an inspiration. And then a few minutes later, he turned to me and he said, can we use lighting? Can we make it, can we put lights in it somehow? And I said, let's give it a try. So from then, from then I, I did a, a model um, of what I was thinking of, which basically was what we now have. Um, because of structural issues, because of the idea of putting the lighting in, there were all kinds of, um, of things to consider. And it was a team that I was working with, a team of, of engineers, uh, architects, designers um it it was i made six at least six different models because everything had to keep changing and the main thing there was that because of all this uh practical concerns my job um, was to keep it fresh to keep the initial idea of the waves 
no matter what they said, well, we can't use that material. We can't do that, that type of thing. We've got to think of something else. It ended up being in fiberglass, which was brilliant. Um, there are little LED lights in, installed in the edges of these on a computerized system so that um, it goes from one side to the other or one end to the other, uh, moving along each piece slowly and changing color. It's the most amazing thing. And um, I know Bernie has had uh, good input and I have too from people that uh, you know come to see it. This is 2012, so it's been eight years and it's, it's just as exciting now as it was then. Um, uh, that's pretty much the story of making it. The title of it, or, or the theme for the hospital in general, was Healing Waters. And I Mark having described a bit of the interior of the hospital and its intention to really make it a welcoming place and a comforting place for children and for their families. This is a perfect um, entry level piece for people, welcoming them, creating a sense of very quiet, very beautiful and very elegant joy with it. Um, and as he said, we, we go back to Chicago often and sometimes just walk by and people who are not coming because they need the services of the hospital simply come by to enjoy and admire it. So we're going to turn now to the uh, two pieces. This is an amazing statistic that exceeds the original one of the 90% of the pieces you have created have been sold. Uh, there are 51 participants and there are 50 <laughs> suggested titles for the two pieces. So maybe some ghosts that are participating, but I think you need some time, Mark, to review them and select the winning title. Um, and I think while we're doing that, if Rose, you want to put that is the winning piece um, on the screen, that might be fun for people to see what they didn't get. Um, <laughs> I, I just wanted to, Mark, while you're going through the titles with um, Rose, yeah. your choice, um, to simply say, and um, I fortunately with computers, I can see a number of the names of people who are participating. What a joy I think each one of us have had in working with Mark in having his work as part of the world in which we live. And each of the pieces, this is I think what I love most about the 900 pieces, um, all of them come with their own stories. Uh, they come with friendships, relationships, people who have seen one of Mark's works and want to have a Mark in their, uh, or a Davis in their home, um, in their life, in their world. Um, many times the smaller pieces are bought um, as gifts for friends, uh, as a way of celebrating and sharing an important moment in everyone's life. So the combination of Ode to Joy, the joy of movement, all of those things uh, are titles that uh, are always apt for what Mark um, has done and continues to do. And in great part, and I go back to the beginning of our conversation, which um, centered around the word of relationships and trust. I think that Mark um, creates that sense of trust in his relationships with each and every one of the pieces he's made and with each and every one of you who were kind enough to join us uh, for this. So we've now exceeded 60 title uh, suggestions from 51 people. So people's imaginations are working hard. Mark, we might employ this in the future so you can be relieved of the function. Um, <laughs> Sounds have, good. Have you come up with your uh, Well, I, I don't have any of the titles uh, to see. Uh, Rose. Rose. Uh, is I will. I will also. This way, you guys can understand how tough this decision is going to be. But um, here are the ones for A. So, Bird of Paradise, Flying Fire, Dancing Butterflies, Zippity Doodah, My What a Wonderful Day, Flying you, Kites, Icarus first, on Foot. First, can you put that one back up on the screen? So then we'll sort of be able to. Talk with you. Yes, yes. Yes. Okay, and then Mark, you'll have to remember what she's saying. Yes. Okay. Just okay. stop me if there's one that speaks to you. Um, burst into space. Oh. Um, swoop, uplifted, diverging paths, swept away, airborne, reverent rose, I'm partial to that. <laughs> wings, wings of joy, dancing under the sun. Um, 
flower of promise, flight, carrying the torch, fairy encounter, unencumbered flight, penguin sunset kites, sailor's <laughs> um, delight, soaring bright, these are starting to rhyme, um, Phoenix Rise, Autumn Expectation, Aviator's Dream, Marvelous Mariposa. Marvelous um, what? Mariposa, which means butterfly what? in Spanish. Um, Flame of Beginnings, Autumn in the Time of Trial, Soaring Bright. Um, people are asking to reread some of them. Um, why don't you do the second one for now? Second one is for B. We have. Go slowly. I will. I will. I'm sorry. Um, let me call you, sweetheart. Silver <laughs> birds. Solid scrutiny. Uplifting. The moose. Um, ascension from morality. Spinning plates. Fountain of youth. Life Refreshed, Tin Pan Alley, Tentative Joy, Swallows Bathing, An Enduring Glimpse, Silver Spoon, <laughs> someone says, this one's harder, Indulgence, um, Sweeping Upward, Safe Landing, Deceptive con Conception, Silver Spoken Cinders, Midnight Moonlight. Um, oh, man. God, there are some good ones. We're going to, you can write these all down. You, is this, would it be wrong of me to, like, if the ones that I'm not, okay. if it, that aren't the winners, maybe something else would get named them? Um, I don't think there are copyrights on the name, so you <laughs> Yes. Good. 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 I have. Oh, I, uh, for PC, Aphrodite's laughter. Yeah. <laughs> Such great titles. My God. Are great. Well, you, you go guys are good. Can Can you do? The, I, I, there's two that I I want to remember. And wait, I'm gonna uh, write down. Uh, can you do with the side uh, the number two again? Just I'm sorry, Rose, but. Okay. I need to... Um, number two. Let me call you sweetheart. Silver birds. Um, uplifting the moose. I love that. Oops, your screw. Oops, your sanctuary. Fountain of youth. Life refreshed. Tentative joy. Swallows bathing. An enduring glimpse. Silver spoon. Indulgence. Sweeping Upward, Dancer, Aphrodite's Laughter, um, Safe Landing, Stable Nestings, Silver Spoken Cinders. <laughs> Alliteration is hard. I know, uh, I know. <laughs> sweeping Skyward, um, And also someone just asked if I would be able to share these titles later in the following email to everyone registered. I will be able to share these names because they are really oh, good. Oh, good, good. Um, can I, can I make you go over the first ones again too? You could, we could also, we could also maybe announce the winner in said email. If you'd like more time maybe to go through it. Um, just let's do the first, the okay. first one. All right, you I got it. Bird of Paradise. Flying fire, dancing butterflies, zippity doo dah, my what a wonderful day. Flying kites, Icarus on foot, the flight, burst into space. Um, swoop, uplifted, diverging paths, swept away, airborne. Reverent rose, wings of joy, dancing under the sun, Flowers of Promise, Flight, Carrying the Torch, 
fairy encounter, unencumbered flight, penguins sunset kites, sailors <laughs> delights. <laughs> what delights? What delights? Sailors delight. <laughs> um, soaring bright. Wow, <laughs> really all rhyming. Um, Phoenix rise, autumn expectation. Marvelous Mariposa, yeah. Flame of Beginnings, Autumn in a Time of Trial. Oh, people are adding more. Soaring Bright again. Um, and uh, Rose, I saw someone uh, mentioned that you skipped over Pas de Deux, I believe. Pas oh, de yeah. Deux. Yep. Pas de Deux and Flower of Promise. There you have it, Mark, you're on. Oh boy. And if, anyone, um, if I skipped anyone else's, you have three seconds to set that up again. <laughs> oh, uh, you, you know, I, I feel bad because part, uh, I shouldn't say that. Um, part, of the, part of this is uh, some, of, some of these titles are making me crack up and, I'm, and I'm, I'm just like loving them. And I'm writing down a lot of them that I think I might use for other things. But Partly what I, I look for in a title is something um, that, that, that it creates a, a sort of a simple uh, image many times that uh, doesn't exactly describe the piece, but sort of gives a counterpoint to, uh, you, you know, it, it, it gives a counterpoint to the, to the, to the sort of obviousness of, of or, well, the, the solidity of it. And, um, um, I actually think Fountain of Youth is my favorite, this is my favorite one. And it's not, it's not like, I'm not saying it's not the most exciting name, but it works so well, I think. And it's, it's, it's profound and it's uplifting and it's, it's, it's quite, quite wonderful. Um, but boy, there's a lot of other ones that are really, really cool. So but I, I think that's my favorite. I hope to, I don't, I hope I'm not being boring, but that's what I like. So Rose, let's go with Fountain of Youth. All right. And whoever provided us with that name should also show us how we can get to it. Yeah. So that we can buy from it and Mark can continue to create for another 50 years. <laughs> yes. I just want to thank everyone, Rose, especially Mark. Terrific. Thank you so much. And thank you all for being a part of this amazing experience. <laughs> Because um, as many of you who know Mark well know, uh, when he is about to approach such a new adventure, butterflies are certainly part it's of it. Joyce! Hi, <laughs> Joyce. It's so wonderful <laughs> to um, be able to share with you. And hopefully many of you got the sense that the work is the artist and the artist is the work. So thank you, Mark. Thank you, everyone, for being part of Ode to Joy. See you, Mark. Bye, Bernie. Thanks. <laughs>